for Alabama and Major League Pitcher, brought to you each week by CrossFit Candor. CrossFit Candor, this place will change your life if you let it. Lance, man, uh, I guess we've talked about it before. This is what makes postseason baseball so terrific is you think you know, based on 162 games, who the best teams are, but it doesn't always play out as scripted. And what the Washington Nationals have done, I mean, i got to be honest with you, man, I'm blown away. I, I, I mean, I know when you got two pitchers like Strasburg and, and Scherzer, but you lose Bryce Harper, you start out terribly this season. At times, uh, Martinez, I think, looked overwhelmed as a manager to me, and then all of a sudden, they turn it around, they get into the playoffs as a wild card. They battle back against Milwaukee. I guess I should have known, if you're good enough to beat the Dodgers and you're good enough to go into L.A. in a game five and win a tight one like that, you're good enough to beat the Cardinals. But they just wiped St. Louis out. I mean, it was a mismatch, a sweep. Are you as surprised as I am by what the Nationals have done this postseason? Well, overall, it's just surprised in general. Like you said, started off 19-31, and 31, but I think that, um, and, and how you mentioned Davey Martinez looked a little overwhelmed. I think that you can kind of take it the other way. He comes from that Joe Madden school of, you know, very no ho nonchalant looking, but I mean, they're, they're intense when it comes to it, but let his players play. And I think that's over the course of the year that, that it started to develop and, and, and players love playing for him. And I mean, what you're seeing now is unbelievable starting pitching. You know, everybody says, you know, defense travels, and that's kind of what pitching does. You know, you, you can you – know, good pitching will beat anybody. I mean, I, you look at their four the – four, the top four guys just in that one series had 26 in the third innings with a 1-3 ERA, 40 strikeouts and only six walks. That's how you get it done. And, and you know, there's quotes from the Cardinals manager saying, well, you know, what happened in this series? He goes, pitching. I mean, their the guys were as dominant as they can be. and um, I really got to see a little bit of uh, Strasburg, and that was as good a game pitched as I've seen, man. He had the right-on-right changeup working. It was filthy. I mean, 83, 84-mile curveballs. But when they, when you got guys that walk out with no-hit stuff through five innings, I think what they had zero runs on the first three games and through the sixth inning. I mean, that's tough to do. Your offense um, it gives you a lot of momentum with offense. But, man, and pitching, can if it shuts it down, it, it's so hard to overcome that. Yeah, it is, and I, I just think Strasburg is being what he was supposed to be. I mean, he came up with, with all of the um, talent in the world and has been good, don't get me wrong, but I don't think he's, based on the expectations that he had, been what everybody thought he would be, but you're right. I mean, the other night, that was a clinic, and, uh, I, you know, I – Again, I, I just thought the Nationals were a pretty good team. I thought they were good enough to win the wild card. I didn't think they'd beat the Brewers. I'm still scratching my head on on that game five in L.A., how they came back against the Dodgers and, uh, you know, beat uh, beat Kershaw uh, when he came in. Now, as the – What you see, Gary, what you see a lot of times is that, you know, you always hear that that team that's in the wild card, they're playing for their lives. You know, the end of the year, they're playing for their lives. They get into the, the little one-game wild card, they're playing for their lives, and – so you kind of have that mindset of that's how they continue to play. And so that's why a lot of times you do see that wild card team that barely got in and keeps advancing because they've been playing for their lives since September started. and Or, shoot, the Nationals have been playing since, for the most part, yeah. May. So I think that's why you're seeing that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's a miraculous uh, uh, story for them. I, I think we touched on this last week, and I'm going to get to the advantage now that I think the, the Nationals have, because I don't think they're as good as the Astros or the Yankees. I'll say that again, but I don't think they were as good as the Dodgers. I'm not sure. I thought they were as good as the Cardinals or the Brewers, so they may surprise us. But this Nationals team is a team that I think is better because Bryce Harper left in free agency. And again, I know he's a great player. I would never argue that. I don't know that he, and I said this last week to you, I don't know that he makes a, his team better. Uh, I mean, he. I still think he is a look at me guy. I think he's always been an individualist. Going back when he was 15 years old, and we already knew who he was. Uh, the antics, the 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 arrogance. Uh, I know he wants to win when he goes out there, but I'm not sure Bryce Harper is in it for anybody other than Bryce Harper. That's just my perception, Lance. I, I'm curious what you think. Well, I mean, I can see how everybody you, know, you can see that. Um, obviously, when a team. Um, very much underachieved in his years in Washington. And then the moment he leaves, it's looking like, you know, it's their best team in the history when they outside of, you know, Rendon and then Soto's a, a future superstar. 
Um, and, and the Acuna mode, I mean, just so young and so energetic and, and very good at all the things he does. But outside of that, I mean, Rendon had a great year, but, you know, you didn't have the quote-unquote star power like you had Bryce Harper. Now, I think Rendon will turn into that guy. Um, they just had a good mix, I mean, uh, of Zimmerman and Kendrick. Those two guys, I mean, 35, 36 years old, have been around the block. Zimmerman's been a lifer in Washington. Um, Kendrick has played on some teams in the Angels organization, the Dodgers that have won you know, in the postseason. So, I mean, those guys know how to win. And so when you can look at those guys and see how it is, I mean, it shows you that, hey, good leadership is hard to come by. And just because you're a great player doesn't mean you're a good leader and you make everybody else better. And that's, I think, what you're going to see, um, you know, throughout this year um, as the playoffs continue of what Bryce Harper was. Wasn't, you know, like I said, unbelievable player. will put up possibly numbers to, you know, he, he earned $300 million, So he, he's put up numbers to earn that. But it doesn't mean... Every star player, I mean, probably Manny Machado, same type of thing, aren't getting the best out of all their other players. They're just not the leaders um, that they, you know, that the team, for the most part, needs. You know, that they're 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 the same player they are, but the team needs that leadership. And just because you make three hundred million doesn't mean you're automatically that guy. All right, now the advantage that the Nationals have, and I know there'll be some people that come out and try to say, "Well, they're hot. They, you know, they could they could get rust." I don't see it that way. Uh, the Yankees, Astros haven't even played Game Four yet. It's postponed yesterday. They'll play it tonight. This could be a long series. The Nationals can sit there, man. They can they can structure their pitching just like it's the start of the season. I mean, they you this has got to be a huge advantage for the Washington Nationals. Yeah, I think you, uh, and that's the biggest thing is, is the pitching has been that good and they can line it up exactly how they want, seeing where it's going to be played. Hey, how's this going to, you know, you can go back and find, you know, stats and everywhere they're at. Um, so I do believe that is an advantage for them. I see what people say, hey, they were hot. They want to stay hot. And that's something that um, it, it's just on how you manage the off days and, and the practices and getting guys simulated games. How you manage that is how you keep those hitters hot. But other than that, for the pitching staff, it is absolutely perfect. You can, you know, the best situation you could have asked for for Davey Martinez and the Nationals organization. All right, now let's get the Yankees Astros. And I was uh, at lunch the other day, and I heard some guys talking. And give the Yankees credit, man. They went in there. They they were on a roll. They went in there and just bombed the Astros in game one. Astros won a gut-wrenching extra inning game in game two. And uh, they were Yankees fans, and they're talking. Yeah, we're going to go back to Yankee Stadium, going to win Game Three, and and going to go ahead and take this thing in five. I just said, put. The, I heard him. I said, hey, pump the brakes. You ain't beating. <laughs> you ain't beating Garrett Cole. Oh yeah, we're gonna. No, you ain't beating Garrett Cole. You might win the the ALCS. You ain't winning Game Three. Now we've talked about some great pitchers. Now this is what the irony is. He may be playing for the Yankees next year. You and I both know. <laughs> you know they may open up the pocketbook for this guy, but they weren't beating Garrett Cole in Game Three, were they? It's crazy, man. No one's beating this guy. Dude, I mean, like, you look at this dude who started off 4-5 and five this year in, like, May. Mid-May, he was 4-5, and five, and he finished the season 20-5. and five. So, that's 16-0. and 0. Um, I think he they haven't lost a start. That he, or he hasn't had a loss since May. And I think they've, they've only lost one or two starts that he's had since that time, which is unbelievable. And, I mean, you're talking a guy – I'd love to go out there – in the playoffs, give up five walks and still give up no runs. Yeah, that's, that's phenomenal. How good he is. Yeah. I mean, he, everybody's like, oh, Garrett, you know, you look at the headlines. All I saw the first time was uh, Cole wasn't sharp or whatever. I'm, I'm thinking, all right, he went six innings, three runs, had a quality start. He went seven innings, no runs. That just shows you how good and how on a roll he is. And right now, man, it's just confidence. He goes out there expecting to dominate. And when you do walk out there with 90, uh, you know, 99 to 100 mile an hour fastballs and 92 mile an hour sliders, you will dominate. But He's good, man. And he's one of those guys that's developing into I me. Mean, this is another former first pick of the draft. He's developing into that pitcher that everyone sure. thought he should have been the moment he was drafted. And, and like I said, everybody takes a little bit of time. Some guys take more time. Some guys don't uh, to, to kind of reach their potential. But he is showing every bit why he was the number one pick from the Pirates. Yeah, and you're right. To walk five against that lineup, usually you walk five against the Yankees. Uh, those guys are coming around on on home runs, and you're getting beat about eight to two. But that's how good he is. Hey, listen, uh, Lance, for the Yankees, I think tonight's a must win. They've you know Astros have taken home field back. They got to get this thing to two and two to have a shot, don't you think? I, I do, I really do. And um, with Tanaka going, that that rain delay for the or the, the rain out really yeah, helps helps out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Yankees more than the Astros. I know the Astros get to line it up as well, but. Um, with Tanaka being able to come, he had that 
such uh, you know such good success in the game one, six innings of shutout ball. It's going to help him out to be able to get back on there. And I think that's kind of the confidence boost they're going to need to recover from that. And you know it's going to be a crazy crowd, um, and they want to jump all over Zach Greinke. So it's going to be a rematch of game one. Um, and so the Yankees are obviously wanting those same results. You know, usually we talk to Lance uh, because it's such a tight segment. We don't take any calls, but uh, Tom wants to ask you a question, Lance. You good with that? Let's do it. All right. Hey, Tom, you're on with Lance Cormier. Uh, thanks, Gary. Good morning, Lance. Morning, Tom. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, the other night, uh, Cole was pitching, uh, I noticed, to Sanchez. And low and away, and Sanchez swung at it every time. No chance to uh, hit that pitch at all. And 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 tell analyze that for me. Well, what you're seeing, like it's kind of changed in everybody's mindset as a hitter. I mean, that's why you're seeing the strikeout rate go off the charts and the home run records fall all the time because everybody takes the same swing for the most part on every pitch, and so they look. That's why a guy can look so fooled on two pitches and then the next pitch he hits a home run. And you're like, did you see the happen? pitch I'm like talking that. about? Say that again? I said, did you see the pitch I'm talking about? I did not. It was a bunch uh, of ball I, low and away from a right-handed batter. And, I mean, he just sucked him up every time he come up there. Well, that's the beauty, Tom. These guys got to make a split uh, decision in, in a, you know, in a millisecond. And when it came out of <laughs> his hand, it wasn't low and away. That's why good pitchers are good pitchers, right, Lance? Or, yeah, and then, Tom, what you're saying is he guy throws 99 on that black in the same plane. His slider comes off of the same exact look, and it's 92 with break. So, um, had a shoot, one of our hitting coaches at Alabama, Coach Todd Butler, uh, we were facing Matt Ginter at Mississippi State, a former first rounder. And he said, Look, boys, it, the slider is so good. You got to swing like everything's a fastball because if, if it's not a fastball, you won't hit it anyway, so swing like <laughs> if it's a fastball. That way, if it is a fastball, you hit it. I think, I think we beat him two to one, and that's that's some guys are that good that you really got to do that. He struck out fifteen, I think, plus, but um, you know, one or two guys didn't miss the fastball, and we end up scoring a couple runs. But that's that's kind of how you have to go, and so that's what those guys their mindset because that that ninety two mile an hour breaking pitch on the outside part looks like the ninety nine mile an hour fastball up until the very last second, right as you're about to swing, and you can't. You can't make the decision not to swing once you've already geared up and ready to go. I got you. But, uh, you know, the look on Sanchez's face, uh, both times that uh, the pitcher got him with those pitches, it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one of those, like, man, he keeps, he keeps doing it again. Hey, doing thank you, Tom. Awesome. <laughs> thank you, Gary. Appreciate Thanks, it. Lance. I think yes, what, you're, Thanks, what you're saying, Lance, is it is for these hitters, sometimes it is a guessing game against these top pitchers, and you just hope you guess right. And if you don't, like you said, you look bad, particularly, I think you bring up a great point, because hitters don't hit like they used to. They don't have a two-strike swing anymore. You know, back in the when I was growing up, it, you were taught, even at my level of baseball, growing up as a kid, hey, two strikes, you got to have a two-strike swing. you got to be willing just to put the ball in play. They don't approach it that way anymore, do they? No, man. It used to be two strikes, choke up, yeah. spread your feet out, you know, be the be just this tough hitter that, you know, spoil a pitch, you know, slap it in the dugout, keep your keep it going. Now, man, the leg kick gets even higher. They're I mean, they're just trying for launch angle and home runs. And they're okay with they're okay with a one for four with three strikeouts and a home run. And the analytics is showing that so is the front office. And I, I think that's a bad part of the game because it's teaching hitters. I mean you watch 12-year-olds now just wanting to lift balls and, and even shoot, even go all the way down to six-year-olds. They just want to lift balls and not worry about anything else. And I think just the mechanics on how you swing, man, a good two-strike approach, that's the toughest part as a pitcher. I want to see a guy, you know, battle, battle, battle. Yeah, to me, when teams do that, that makes it a lot harder on a pitcher. When the guy goes up there free swinging, like he said, like um, Sanchez, like Tom just mentioned, Sanchez taking the same swing on that same – slider down and away I mean a good pitcher on a good night I'll just keep throwing that slider down and away and it's like it, it feels so easy to throw sometimes because you know like if I just get on the outside part of the plate he's whiffing because he he's not changing his approach but yeah it is totally changed and that's why you're seeing the strikeout numbers like I said increase and the home runs also as well um, and it, until guys stop getting paid millions and millions of dollars for hitting 30 home runs and still striking out 200 it's not going to change. Yeah. As long as they keep paying them, they won't care. 
All right, a couple quick managerial questions. Are you surprised that the Phillies uh, canned Kapler and um, was he a was he a scapegoat in that situation? I am, and I, I both things are right. I think I was surprised, and I do think he was the scapegoat for um, injuries. Um, I mean, Bryce Harper, that you bring in a guy like that, they brought in Andrew McCutcheon, they brought in JT Romuto, and then brought in some bullpen help. Well, three bullpen helps. You got Hunter, Robertson, and, and, and uh, I forget who the other one was. They had like 20 combined innings this year. I mean, so you have your seven, eight, nine inning setup men and closer. They have 20 innings total. That pretty much tells you your bullpen's not going to be what you thought it was going to be. Then you have your $300 million man come in, and he always starts slow and finishes up with respectable numbers, but he always starts slow. And so that's one of those tough things to do. So I, I do believe he was the scapegoat, and um, but that's a tough place to, to play and coach because they want instant results. And so um, I was surprised a little bit about that, but he'll get on his feet somewhere. All right, and everything kind of has come full circle for Joe Madden. He's uh, – Back in the Angels organization, uh, he's going to manage a club that, let's be honest, uh, reeling from tragedy and scandal and uh, just a lot of negative vibes around that club right now. How do you think Madden will will handle that, and uh, do you think he'll be able to get things going in the right direction and, and win there the way he won at Tampa and the way he won with the with the Cubs? Well, I mean, he, he is, to me, the best manager I've ever had and just the, the best person to play for just because he loves his players. He puts guys in the right situation just to be successful. He lets you, you know, he, he gives you that sense of relax, like, all right, play. You, you, your job's not on the line every time you, you throw a pitch. And so for that, for the player, it makes it easier. Now, you're right. He's going into a tough situation, but he does have the best player on the planet, Mike Trout. True. Um, there is some, you know, some guys, some younger guys there, but um, the three-year deal, man, that, that's, to me, that's kind of the scarier thing, just because he doesn't get a, a five-year deal. It's, you know, when, when a team's been losing that many years with the best player in the game, it's tough to turn things around that fast. But if anybody can do it, I believe Joe Madden can. So I think it's a great situation, great fit. He's a guy who loves the uh, Los Angeles area, never sold his house. I think the last 14 years, he's been out of L.A., and he's kept that house there. And so um, he kept it for this reason, and so he's getting to go back home, and I know he's excited, and so that's a good thing, good situation for him. Yeah, he's a good manager. All right, uh, real quickly, Yankees or Astros, who you like? I, I like the Astros. Um, I, I still I just like the pitching staff. Um, to me, the uh, I know the Yankees' bullpen is really good, but you got to have a lead to get to that bullpen, and, and right now the, the Astros' starting pitching to me is the better um, unit and so they're giving that lead. They're they're holding the lead better. I know they got to Verlander with a with a jack, but man, if you can just get Cole, I mean, I think Verlander comes back better, and you get Cole another start, man. That just seems like that's the recipe to win. All right, I know something else you like, and uh, you're really completely invested. You, your wife, your coaches, uh, you like helping people reach their fitness goals. And CrossFit Candor has the best uh, CrossFit equipment. It's got all the space. Uh, support network. You'll help people with with their dietary needs. You'll train them one on one if needed. They'll get in the classes. It's twenty four seven. I mean, you've taken this concept and you've developed it over the years, and it's involved into a. It's not just a gym. I know that the members are. It's a little bit like family over there, CrossFit Canada, isn't it, Lance? Yeah, absolutely. Going on seven years now, and you're right. We built a family uh, oriented, you know, community based. Um, workout routine system and this is where um, especially right now where we're about to approach Halloween where there's gonna be candy everywhere then you got Thanksgiving and Christmas and all the holiday season and for the most part you work nine months out of the year to recover from the three months that you went off the rails and so why not get started now and kind of get into a situation where you can kind of you know put yourself on the other side of the uh, eight ball and just you know prepare yourself and and learn good habits and learn how to you know, you know learn better eating habits that way when because everybody's going to go crazy when the holidays come. Everybody's going to eat, and you got parties and everything. But to make better choices, you know, the days and all those things before that, that way you can enjoy that and, and get into a workout routine so you can have better habits, you know, when it comes to just doing those types of stuff. So that's, to me, what it helps us out to get through the, the holiday season and not try to fight that nine-month battle. of, And it's so hard once you go, you know, because a lot of times people go, hey, Ah, I'll just get, you know, I'll give up on it and I'll just do it later. Like, that's the harder thing to do. You might as well try to maintain as much as you can. That way it's not as hard after the holidays are over. All right, CrossFit Candor, folks, uh, 205-329-3683.
in Tuscaloosa, the person that thinks they can and the person that thinks they can't, it's the same. Which one are you? CrossFit Candor will help you be a can-do, not a can't-do kind of person when it comes to your fitness needs. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, Gary. Love it, man.